I got pregnant at 18 and being Asian that was taboo and I got married within a week. We both did not have time to digest that. And then literally five years of that relationship was very abusive. Yeah. So after going through that for five years, I then left with my four-year-old son and I spent three years away from my husband. Yes. And so after three years of being apart, I got divorced and then I began dating my husband again. Mm -hmm. Women have the empathy to feel, to process, to think, to cry, to scream. Mm. Men don't. Men, when a situation's getting tough at home, his immediate reaction is, I'll run to the pub, I'll run to work, I'll go play golf, because I don't know how to process. Not because I'm evil and mean, but, but I just genuinely don't, don't know how to feel. Mm. There's also a huge percentage of men that deal with denial and pain, and nobody talks to them, nobody talks about them yeah. because they're normally seen as the typical yes. abusers. Yeah. But women abuse too, and women hit too, and women cheat too, and women turn good men also into bitter, angry men. Women also turn men into men who say, I never want to marry again. How often do we tell our sons we love them? But you tell your daughters. Yes. And so the boy grows up feeling love's conditional, do I have to behave a certain way to get love? Dad behaved a certain way and I watched mom stay. So if I behave this way too, my wife will stay. And it's normal. Hello and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Googi. Now, when people get married, the assumption is they want to spend the rest of their lives with their spouse. But what happens when you wake up and you realize this person I'm sleeping next to is not the man I want in my life or the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with? Is divorce an option? Is it even healthy? Well, today that's the conversation we are going to have on the show and who else to help us navigate this conversation rather than someone you have seen here on the show. I will be letting her introduce herself but before I do that allow me to say thank you to Elegance Fashion Kenya for coming through for your girl with this amazing look and you can check them out. Their contact details are right here and our partners here at Westwood Hotel for giving us this therapeutic space so that we are able to bring you conversations that have the ability to impact lives. And now, allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Thank Good you. morning. Good morning. <laughs> yes, please introduce yourself. Thank you for having me again. My name is Shazman Bank. I'm a strategic life, relationship, and intimacy coach. I've been coaching for over 10 years. I've had the privilege to work with so many men, women, teenagers and just go through so many different topics nothing is new and this is what i want to say there is no shame where you are in life and what you're going through this topic today is a beautiful opportunity if you're in a marriage and you feel you've lost your voice or you don't know how to tell your spouse exactly how you feel this is the this is the episode you tell your spouse sit down and you watch it together and it will unlock so much for the both of you. Oh my goodness. Shaz! You know, I always try this thing with your name, Shazmin Banks. <laughs> and I always say, here on this show, we can always bank on you. I like it. Thank you for every time you accept an invitation to the show. It's a pleasure. You know, we love you here. Thank looking you. lovely. <laughs> I've told you this multiple times this morning. It's because you do. Thank and I know we are about to get into a very sensitive topic. But I also realize some of the people watching us are new and they might not know about you know your backstory yes. they don't even know you have been divorced and then <laughs> married the same man again so in a nutshell yes. maybe you could tell people just briefly about your story so that they understand why this conversation to you is also mind yeah you know, the difference with, I've seen a lot of life coaches or therapists or psychologists is you learn the work yeah. and then you teach people the work, you educate them on the work. 
it's very different when you've experienced life and you've gone through it. So you're not teaching practically. Yeah. You're sympathetic and you're empathetic to what people are really feeling. Mm -hmm. Because I got pregnant at 18 and being Asian, that was taboo. And I got married within a week. We both did not have time to digest that. And then literally five years of that relationship was very abusive. Yeah. So after going through that for five years, I then left with my four-year-old son and I spent three years away from my husband. Yes. It was hard. I went through the whole process of everything. And then I realized at some point that I didn't want a story of you know, sadness, of sorrow. I didn't want a story of just sympathy because that's what I was getting from so many people. Mm -hmm. How can he do this to you? How could you go through this? You were so young, yeah. you made a mistake. And I said, no, my, my story has to be more powerful. It has to be better. Mm. And I tried therapy and I didn't find counsel in it. It, it was very hard to keep discussing it. Yeah. And that's when I embarked on a journey myself. And I started to see how can I heal and I started to work through different tools myself and then I discovered yeah. coaching and that's what really 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 helped me heal and so after three years of being apart I got divorced and then I began dating my husband again mm -hmm. because he got through a process of healing he went through finding forgiveness in yes. him as well and then we dated for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And after that, we've been together 11 years now since with a 17 year old boy. Yeah. And this year, March will be 21 years since the day we met. <laughs> so we still, we still celebrate the same first yes. anniversary because we say the divorce in between was a big lesson. Yeah. And, and that's something I really understand when people are going through. So it's not, you know, practical, do seven steps to get through yes. it. It's really understanding the breakdown, how you get there and then what can you do? Mm -hmm. And then especially with children, because I also had a four year old child oh. during that divorce. Yeah. So I'm really excited about this conversation because I, I can feel where people are. Yeah. I can feel where people can go. I can see the hope that a lot of people can't see yes. right now. Yeah. So I'm I'm so you excited. excited. So divorce does not mean we cannot reconnect. But for us to reconnect, we have to be very intentional mm. and deliberate about our relationship. I want to be a listener today on today's conversation because I want to learn. I want to learn. So if you could just take us through this conversation, pole pole, <laughs> with, with no rush, just take us through yeah. divorce. Is it healthy? Does it mean that we are enemies? Because half of the stories that I have had the privilege to cover, when people divorce, it's world war. They mm. become enemies. You cannot even talk. The kids are collateral damage. Mm. So if you could take us through divorce, the best way to go about it, is it healthy? And should I, just like Shazmin, go back to the man that I once divorced? Okay, so yeah. you know, if, if we begin, yes. what are some of the reasons first people yeah. go through divorce? Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing a lot of people are stuck in is, first of all, society religion god and then parents mm. and then friends how do i tell people that i have shown and portrayed that i'm okay with how do i tell people that i'm broken because i've shown on social media i'm very okay how do i go against god because yeah. i also did a little bit of research and i yeah. i understood through miles monroe and he also explained that you know in in the bible in the old testament there was no provision for divorce mm -hmm. and so you know he was explaining that god didn't create provision for divorce and moses was the person that helped with that process mm -hmm. and his message was very beautiful in the sense that if you're going to get married first it should be very intentional because no one ever gets married thinking I'm going to end in divorce. Mm. You come together with so many hopes, yes. so many dreams, and you, you curate a whole life together. You yes. have a vision. But a lot of people don't understand what leads to divorce. How did I get there before I even start grieving the process of mm. divorce? Mm. I think this conversation is so intentional because there's a difference with getting stunned with, I've just got asked for a divorce. 
I just found out my spouse is cheating and having an affair. That infidelity is a shock. Mm -hmm. And for some people, you can get through it. You can survive going through that infidelity yeah. and making your marriage work. Mm -hmm. But it's always dependent on having two people who want the relationship to work versus the person who gets suddenly shocked that my spouse is having an affair yes. and you're having to separate now because you don't immediately go for divorce. The first step is one of you is moving out, one of you leaves and goes back home. Then there's the other step, which is not a lot of people can do that. A lot of people will stay and tolerate the situation because I financially cannot leave. Mm. I let all my dreams, mm. my hopes, my job, my ability, myself yes. go yes. to put it into this marriage with yeah. so much hope. Mm -hmm. And now it's breaking down. I can't go back home because if I talk to anybody at home, I've understood with the culture, it's yeah. you're getting a home, you have a car, you have all your expenses paid for, why would you leave this situation? Mm. Understand it. Marriage is not perfect. You should tolerate it. Give it time. And I found so many young women between 25 to 32 talking to me saying, when I tell my parents that he's cheating, he's abusive, I'm financially stuck, he's completely controlling me, they turn around and say, well, your life looks fine. If you come back home, we cannot provide for you financially. What will the children do? How can you split? What will the community around us say? What will God say? say. You're putting yourself into the hellfire. Yes. You are wronging who you are. And so you're confusing people with, when do I leave? When is enough enough? How much shall I tolerate? Yeah. And then you've also got the other twist, Lynn which is, it's become easier to leave. A lot of people are not tolerating as much as they used, used to tolerate to. before. Yes. Now, how much do you tolerate? What do you tolerate? When is no a no? When is it okay to completely walk away? And when is enough? Enough. enough. Abuse. Any form of abuse. And I have so many women that will turn around to me and say, but he hasn't hit me yet. And when we have these conversations and you have women and men listening saying, I didn't realize emotional abuse is a thing. I didn't realize mental abuse is a thing. I did not realize depression and suicide was a reason yes. to walk away. Yeah. I'm almost waiting for someone to physically hit me, for me to validate this is not my worth. I should leave, now I can. Mm. Now society maybe will be a bit softer in me and say, right, you physically are getting hit, you should walk and away. And you have the marks to yes. show for it. Exactly. exactly. But no one sees the first marks are internal. You're first going through pain. And when you're going through the process of divorce, it's everything inside, which is you're letting go of dreams, mm -hmm. of hopes, very slowly because it doesn't always come crashing down like the shock of finding out about cheating. So when you're emotionally, mentally, and physically getting abused, even verbally, that's a sign where you pause and say, I will not be treated like that. If this continues, I know that I will walk away and leave. And if you have a partner mm -hmm. that turns around and says, okay, I just realized what I'm doing is wrong. I also realize my, the way I'm behaving with mm -hmm. you is coming from mm -hmm. my childhood. The excuses also of being able to hide behind certain behavior. Yes. And so this is why I'm treating you this way. And both of you work it and mm. you get help to do it. It's healthy and different. Accountability. Yes. Yeah. Versus here I am feeling all alone in the relationship. I really want it to work. I don't want us to head to divorce, so I'm going to tolerate the abuse, verbal, physical, emotional, it doesn't yeah, matter, yeah. because I'm hoping you will get better. Mm. I'm hoping the little promises you make have become so far and few between yeah. that I hold on to them so much, but I'm waiting for you to change. Mm. There's always that one person. That is doing the most. And I call it like a tiptoe dance. Mm. Because you come forward, you want to save the marriage, you want to talk about it. This person's stonewalling you. They're in high conflict. 
So you move backwards and you're waiting for the right time. In that meantime, they don't realize you're struggling, you're emotionally depleted, you're wondering where to go to get the love. And so it's all these little things that mm. break the relationship mm. down. So if you're thinking about what's the right step for me ending the relationship, mm. it's definitely physical abuse, 100%. What breaks down a lot of different relationships is infidelity, is financial, is the lack of commitment, the lack of communication, complete sexless marriages, the lack of intimacy. And intimacy breaking down way before sex breaking down. Yes. Because like in the previous show, intimacy yes. does not equal sex. sex. You could still be having sex but and you're feeling not empty. Intimate. Yes. Absolutely. We are learning. Yes. yes. So there's so many different reasons couples break down. Yeah. But it's also for anyone watching to be able to turn around and say, mm. okay, right now my relationship's not feeling healthy and it's not feeling strong. My partner will not listen to me at all. What do I do? I'm dealing with the children. I can see the children are feeling empty. And what a lot of couples don't realize is you think staying for the children is healthy. Mm. But you will be shocked what a three-year-old is watching, what a three-year-old will not process now because their brains cannot do that yes. at this stage. But what they are subconsciously accepting to be the norm between mom and dad. Because kids are observers. Till the age of 11, yes. they live in a certain brain wave that cannot make sense of what they're going through mm -hmm. because they've not had enough experience to do so. Yeah. So what they do to the age of 11 is take everything in, take the environment in. And then after 11, when they move to a different brain wave mm -hmm. from theta to alpha now, yeah. They move into imaginary, but a little bit into beta, which yeah. means they start to now link things yes. and say, because of A, B, C, this, this is the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad fight, which seems like the norm. Yeah. Now in the outer world, I'm watching my friends, mom and dads. So now I'm starting to process and take information and make sense of life yeah. for myself. Yeah. So don't think as a parent, your two-year-old and your three-year-old is too young to notice yes. you're upset you're sad, dad has hit you. You're shouting. You're shouting, there's tension. Because you're training this child from a young age to, to watch mom and dad and then say, if I approach mom yes. and I behave a certain mm -hmm. way, I can make mom laugh, mm -hmm. I can calm dad down. Some children even become ill, fake stomach aches and headaches because they realize when I'm sick, mom and dad stop fighting to be able to look after me. And these are things you don't realize as parents now build the child up and this is the relationship they will start to have yes. with someone later yeah. on in life. Yeah. So don't take for granted mm -hmm. or think you're protecting your children. They can see, even if you're not screaming, they are watching your body language. Yes. They feel you, mm -hmm. especially mothers. They've lived inside of you. They've understood you for nine months before they were born. Yeah. So when it also comes to children, it's going through now our relationships breaking down. We've reached a point where we're going for divorce. It's being able to understand if you have children, how do you handle it? First of all, your children normally tend to think that you're divorcing me. Mm -hmm. They're losing stability in mm -hmm. their lives. They feel they don't know how to fix the two of you. Yes and they feel a lot of times it's my job to do so. Oh, it's our fault, yes. our parents are divorcing. Exactly. I was misbehaving, that's maybe why mom and dad are fighting. So a lot of times if you've decided we're both now going for a divorce, mm -hmm. how do you handle children? First of all is look at the age group. Have the age appropriate conversation with your children together. Yes. Not apart. And the reason together is because you're showing the children, if mom and dad are going to separate, they're not leaving us. 
I still have my mother and my father. Have the conversation together. Together. God, but people when they are divorcing, they are bitter. They don't even yes. want to see each other. So how do you get to sit your kid down together and have a conversation if you are in that state where I don't even want to see you. I can't stand you anymore. This is what I tell a lot of grown-ups. Yeah. I understand you're human to the problem. But at the end of the day, you have a responsibility beyond yourselves and your egos to have to take care of your child. And here's the thing, Lynn. It's not just sitting down with young children. It's the 15-year-old that's broken. It's the 20-year-old who is suicidal. Who is suicidal. It's the 25-year-old child that's feeling caught up in pr under the pressure, feeling, do I become the man? Yes. Am I supposed to step in in a husband role? Yes. It's the child now, who's now 25, who has run away from conflict because of how the two of you managed it, that now when you need them, mm -hmm. you're taking the anger out on them mm -hmm. and they feel it's easier to move away and run away, go into substance abuse, numb myself with alcohol, because I can't deal with mom and dad yeah. anymore. So they've not learned how to cope with it. So learning that how do I talk to my child, no matter what age they are, they deserve to have this conversation. Yeah. They deserve to have a voice, which means when you do it together, you ask the child, how do you feel? What are the emotions you're going through? What are your fears? Yes. And then it's also to be able to tell the child that you're moving into di two different homes. So as parents, we've discussed how to keep yes. both those schedules as normal as possible. Mm. The mistake so many parents make is you stuff down how the child should feel and you're telling the child what they should go through. Yeah. Now they're talking to their friends. Now their friends are drinking and saying, have this, smoke this, try this, try this. it'll calm you down, yes. you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. And all they're doing is suppressing emotion and, and then blocking and pain. blocking. And then when you sit with those kind of children, it doesn't matter what age. I was talking to someone yesterday who's 32, who was unpacking her parents' divorce when she was seven at 32. It doesn't matter what age you are yeah. to your parents. You're still always yeah. a child yeah. and you deserve that voice wow. to also ask, explain, question, wonder, Understand. and feel safe. Yes. And that's why it's now collaborative parenting versus traditional, which means if you're watching this, you turn around and say, I'm still dealing with anger. I'm still dealing with pain, but I have the child and I've got to be able to make sure as an adult, if I'm struggling with emotion, what is this child going through? Yes. And so I have to be there to regulate my child's emotions. Yeah. Research shows mm. that 73% of women out of a study were able to move on a lot faster wow. after a relationship and have no regrets after divorce. And only 63% of, of men, men were able to move on and have no regrets. And, and when they did this study and they looked at a lot of men, a lot of men said, when we get divorced, when I cheated, when I broke my marriage, I realized I lost a beautiful woman and a beautiful family. And there's no room for anyone to think about how I'm grieving my mistakes as well. Mm. And I don't know where to take these emotions other than to a pub or other than to sleeping with mm. multiple other women. Because it's your fault. You cheated. Exactly. It's your fault. Deal with your pain. No yes. one cares. Exactly. And there's no room for redemption. Yes. There's no room for the man mm. that's made a mistake mm. to be able to see that you can heal and you can transform yeah. and you can be somebody amazing. Yeah. Here's the thing, and this is why it's so important for this generation to understand, especially any woman also watching, that men are human. And when you even look at the word human, it has the man, the word man, man. in it. Yeah. And no one gives them a voice and a chance to feel vulnerable and feel pain because they will be teased. Their fathers taught them, you do not do that. Don't cry. That's our culture. Yes. Do, men don't cry. Get up. 
Stop it. Yes. Behave yourself. Be a man. Be tough. Stand up for yourself. Punch them back. Because this father did the best he could to raise his child. But now the generation has yes. changed where mm -hmm. men need to be soft. Men cry. They're, they're as emotional as we are. There was a study done mm. where men and women were shown an image at the same time. Yeah. An emotional <coughs> image that would trigger feeling mm -hmm. of softness. Men felt it first faster than a woman did the first time. When they were shown the same picture the second time after half an hour, mm. there was a delayed response in a man feeling the emotion to a woman. Mm -hmm. Why? The first time, the man naturally felt his emotion. The second time, he went into his head, got strong, got tough, put up the face, put up the mask and the face, and then processed how to feel that emotion. And that study was powerful because they realized a man will feel the urge to cry, the need to feel emotion, yes. but he immediately puts armor on and says, I'm not allowed to do that. I've been conditioned my whole life not to do that. And now when I'm going through divorce or I'm struggling in my marriage, there's no room for me mm -hmm. because I'm labeled as you're the typical man causing the pain. Yes. But we've also forgotten that women have girlfriends, women have groups, women have the empathy to feel, to process, to think, to cry, to scream. Mm. Men don't. Men, when a situation's getting tough at home, his immediate reaction is, I'll run to the pub, I'll run to work, I'll go play golf, because I don't know how to process. Not because I'm evil and mean, but, but I just genuinely don't, don't know how to feel. Mm. And so that's one part of where I've really seen men tell me or cry in sessions and say, Shazman, I didn't know I could feel this. It's when I ask a man, how do you feel? Yes. <laughs> he will turn around <laughs> and go, physically, mm -hmm. emotionally, mm -hmm. what do you mean? How do I feel? It's not something men are asked. Who asks a man, how do you feel about your boss? How do you feel about your day? How do you feel about your marriage? How do you feel you could change? Yes. They just don't get to think of it. When you look at medieval times in the wars, when a man's castle was being attacked, what's the first thing he turned around and told his people mm. to do? Pull up the gates, pull up the walls, surround yourself, close off. So it's, it's two ways of looking at it. You yeah. have the typical man going through a divorce yes. in a tough marriage where I don't want to change. Don't tell me who to be. I was brought up and watched my father say, be militant, stand there, don't question, don't drop a tear when I smack you, don't drop a tear when mm, I hit you. Mm. You did wrong. Yes. Go sit in your room and think about how wrong you are. Yes. As opposed to this generation where you ask the boy, do you feel like you want to cry? And if he says yes, you tell the boy cry and you hug him and you hold him. Mm -hmm. Wow. When you scream at a boy when he's young, already at a young age, mm -hmm. he blocks off how he's supposed to feel. If he's in tantrum, if he's going through emotion, he can't process more of what you're screaming at him because his mind is already going through so much chaos. Yes. When he's taking in more chaos as a young boy, mm -hmm. he's now learning that there's no room for this emotion there's room for only listening and being militant to yes. what my father says. Yes. Now you take those men who fall in love, who get soft, who want to promise a woman the world. And then no one is teaching people how to really have yeah. a relationship. Yeah. Then it's breaking down and they don't know as a man, yes. how do I show up in this relationship? Mm -hmm. So I do what I've done my whole life, yes. which is by default. Yeah. So the typical you know pathway for divorce is you're being abused and there's infidelity with someone who doesn't want to leave the other woman you're in a relationship where there's complete stonewalling there's consistent conflict you argue about everything mm. you only talk about the basics to yes. keep that dyma mm -hmm. dynamic going mm -hmm. you both understand 
divorce is the only way because we're both really losing who we are. Yeah. There's too much depression. Both of us or one of us is feeling suicidal. Mm -hmm. Or I'm married to a narcissist and I need to be able to get, get yes. out because this relationship won't change. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference with, okay, divorce for that is okay. Yes. And then there's a big difference now with the relationships not working. I'm reading and seeing the new relationships my friends are in. I want that. And I'm not there in my relationship. And so do I get divorced? Because the easy way out now is you're not satisfying me. You're not being what you promised you'd be. Everything is breaking down. I'm out of here. Yeah. And my immediate reaction to protect myself is I rather just get divorced and maybe I'll find somebody else because the fear of age. If I keep staying in this relationship, what if I get older mm. and I can't get married again? Mm. Mm. So let me get out while I can. Yes. As opposed to marriages are tough and they are a lot of work and you are going to have breakdown you're going to have people that stonewall you're going to have a lot of conflict sometimes you're going to have so much ups and downs but it's the two of you coming together to say if we don't sort this out now we're going to both end up Not in divorce both. but i'm bringing it to your attention yes. it's being able to say to your spouse and your partner, I feel empty. I feel I can't talk to you anymore, but I want to work mm -hmm. on this relationship. Mm -hmm. I really want our family to be united. Yes. And then for your spouse to be able to say, I don't think I want that is very different. Yeah. For your spouse to say, I want that, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you know we can get we the can help get for that. Yeah. I just see when it comes to divorce, it's two people battling each other. It's two egos clashing. But then it's also sometimes the realization of when you're going through divorce, what yeah. are the stages? Because the five stages of grief yes. used to only be to the person that you know, lost somebody to mm. death. But now the five stages mm. of grief yes. is to all kinds of loss. So what are some people going through in divorce mm. But I turn around and tell people before we even get to the five stages, yeah. you have been going through it before you finalize the divorce. Yes. That relationship ended a long time ago. You have been grieving for a long, long time, time the loss of what was not mm. before you get to the final bit. Yeah. It's, it's very rare, you know, you'll have the person blindsided unless it's infidelity and you've caught them and you thought you had an amazing marriage. Yeah. And now you're also stuck in the limbo of separation, mm -hmm. which is what we'll cover, which is what do I do there? Yes. But if you look at the stages of grief and you begin first with the shock, the shock of our marriage got here and you don't normally hit shock until there's a period of separation yeah. or processing. Yeah. Because when you're fighting for your marriage or you're going through heavy conflict together. You don't process shock. Shock is when I've had a pause, I've had time to process this is my relationship. I've thought on my own. Yeah. I've stopped approaching. I've stopped fighting. Yeah. And I tell couples when you both stop fighting, that is absolutely dangerous. I rather have fighting, but not fighting abuse, oh. throwing things. Okay fighting where you're still fighting for the marriage. Yes. You're still getting upset. <sighs> your spouse, because your spouse is now still yes. looking for your attention. Yes. They've not resigned to this is the way my relationship is. Yes. And a couple that resigns, it's a dangerous mind mm. because you start to make decisions of, if this is my relationship and this is how I feel now and I'm already feeling alone and empty, yeah. Yeah. what would life be like mm. alone and empty mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. you? And now you start living single yeah. in the marriage because yeah. you're psychologically conditioning yourself yes. for when divorce happens, mm. it should be easier for me to yeah. go through. Yeah. So that's one way, you know, that people deal with shock. Mm -hmm. But then it's the denial because I've seen so many women who are in absolute denial and men who are in denial. How did the relationship get here? And there's a bigger percentage of women, yes, that deal more with the sadness, the pain, the anger of divorce. Mm -hmm. 
but there's also a huge percentage of men that deal with denial and pain and nobody talks to them nobody talks about them yeah. because they're normally seen as the typical yes. abusers yeah but women abuse too and women hit too and women cheat too and women turn good men also into bitter angry men women also turn men into men who say i never want to marry again women also scare men women also take vulnerability away from men yes. so it's it's not just a one sided mm. thing so when you're dealing with denial in a relationship you're dealing with how did we get here we can't be here This i can take us, us back and now in denial you start to say look let us get this give us one more chance let's try one more time but it's not going to work and so you're realizing while you're in shock and denial you're feeling angry and bitter about the situation and now dealing with anger this is where anger now affects the children mm. this is where anger makes divorces mm -hmm. bitter because you're dealing with anger and anger takes away vulnerability mm -hmm. anger pushes you straight into your head to say i'll do something to teach you a lesson you'll see you'll see mm. you've caused me pain yes. i'll take all your money i'll go talk to your boss i'll open the facebook account yes. i'll tarnish your name and i'll take my key our kids yes. away from and you and you never ever see, see them, them again. i will cause you the exact amount of pain mm -hmm. or more that you have caused me yes. and when i turn around and i see so many people in in that level of anger and pain that is the little child inside of you that just doesn't know how to deal with it mm. you are completely enacting a helpless part of yourself yes. because you're hoping this person will still save mm. you and make everything mm. okay. So when you have two egos clashing, when you've been married, you've shared DNA, yeah. you've shared emotion. Yes. That emotion settles in both your bodies. It's not something that you just rip apart and you just move on from. So that anger is you trying to process, how do I live without this person? Yeah. yeah. How could they do that to me? Then the anger of is something wrong with me the anger of your self worth the anger of losing self to have reached where you've reached the anger of how did i tolerate it so long so sometimes you move from being angry at them to being angry at, at yourself. yourself and then what the mistake a lot of parents do is you take out the anger the on the children they should behave The last thing I can deal with is a tantrum. Yes. The last thing I can deal with is you misbehaving. Don't do anything that reminds me of your father. Yes, you look like your father. You, you look like your mother. <laughs> It's angering yeah. me to see you. Yes. Then I see the 20-year-olds, the 30-year-olds that are hiding from their parents because there's so much conflict and they've lived with it mm. for so long. Mm. they cannot tolerate it mm -hmm, anymore. Mm -hmm. So you have the mother confused yeah. why her daughter or son won't be there yeah. for her. Mm -hmm. So she's taking out more anger on the yes. child. You have the father who's confused why the boy won't take his mm -hmm. side and has sided with the mother. Yeah. So it's it becomes so toxic and it's at this point that a lot of people will turn around and say choose mitigation as opposed to going through a lawyer. because if you if you get someone that can mediate for the two of you you can get a sounding voice for the two of you yeah. so when you two have to meet mm -hmm. it's not toxic mm -hmm. there's a sound of reason mm -hmm. that can turn around and say do it this way yeah. calm down yeah. don't scream don't mm -hmm. shout mm -hmm. and then you move into now mm -hmm. bargaining and now this is where it's dangerous lin because when you're bargaining you're turning around to say i will let all my self worth go away to just make this marriage work i'll tolerate the affair if i separate it so i've seen so many men and women who find out about the infidelity yes they're dealing with the shock they've left the home or the person who caused mm -hmm. the infidelity mm -hmm. has left the home mm -hmm. now This person is turning around to say after a few days, a few weeks or a few months, should I take them back? The emotion has calmed down. A bit of the love bombing was happening to get me back. But that affair is still going on. So, do I lose all of who I am because the loneliness is real? Mm. 
the pain is real. Dealing with the home, the house, the bills is real. Having to go through society on my own is real. Mm -hmm. The loss of friends is real. The loss of um, people in the family you thought would stand by you is, is, is real. It's, it's all of that and you turn around and say, yeah. can I do life alone? Mm -hmm. So I'll lose who I am to take you back. Or I will change for you. I will tolerate whoever you are to get you back. Mm -hmm. And you bargain at the cost of self-worth yeah. because you're willing to do anything yeah. to now make this marriage work. Mm -hmm. And this is when I tell people it's the most crucial stage to be able to hold on to the reason of your why you left. No matter how tough that gets. Why did you leave? Yes, and you've got to come back and say, yeah. will this benefit me? Will it make me better? Am I compromising the cost of all of me? Because yeah. there's a difference with compromising for a relationship and there's a difference with losing yourself for mm. a relationship. Mm. Two different things. And then you move from bargaining into depression and you just feel sad. And now you're really moaning the loss of a lot of things. Yeah. And I've seen so many men and women turning around to say, you thought family and friends would be there for you, they're not. And they're not because as a person, uh, a person in society that was looked up to, how do I go to the people who look, looked up to me and show them how broken I am and ask them for help? Yeah. So depression is because you end up going through it alone. Yes. You stay silent. Now there's mild depression, which is natural. And if you're going through divorce, feel it. Anger is healthy, don't make it toxic, because anger will serve you. Repeat that again. <laughs> anger is healthy. Don't make it toxic. toxic. Because a lot of people feel if I'm angry, there's something wrong with me. Oh, yes. I shouldn't feel anger. Mm. But anger, in a healthy way, reminds you of your why. So stay with anger, let it go through. Yes. Feel your emotions. Yeah. You're grieving the loss of dreams. You're grieving the loss of financial stability, of society, of children. You're grieving the loss of an entire lifestyle. Forever and ever. ever. Even if it was painful, you're still grieving the loss of familiar yes. and what you knew. Hmm. You're still grieving the loss of hope. And that is very hard. Yeah. So when people are dealing with depression or you know anyone that's going through divorce and they're smiling and telling you I'm okay, check on them yeah. because mild depression means yes. I can only do this alone and it sometimes doesn't hit you during the mm. day for people who are at work you're busy but when you come back home alone this is now when you could jump back from depression to yes. bargaining and it's not five stages because the last stage is now acceptance mm. when you've felt the pain and you've moaned and you've understood why you are where you are you slowly start to accept. Yeah. Divorce healing is not, in a year you'll feel better. In two years you'll feel better. Yeah. Some people take five years. How long were you married? It depends what were you really going through in the marriage. It, it depends on so many different reasons, mm. but the key is feel your emotions. Write them down. Check in on yourself every single yes. day. Ask yourself, do I feel okay? What are the emotions I'm currently exactly. feeling? Don't run from them. Mm. If you're starting to feel suicidal, get, get help. help. If you're feeling, I don't want to go out, I don't want to face the world, yeah. it's natural. Mm. You're moaning the loss of something huge. huge. Be kind to, to yourself. yourself. And it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. okay. It's not okay to keep living there. Yes. Am I still feeling like a victim? Or am I feeling like every single day I'm getting better, even yeah. if it's 1%? Yes. And this is where exercise matters. This is where journaling matters. This is where self-love and meditation and mm. time out matters. This is where reading a little bit every single yes. day matters. Yeah. Reinvest in your career. I'm not for divorce, I'm not for separation, but I'm also not for staying 
in something that could emotionally kill you or physically kill you. Mm. Because as hard as it is, life has changed. Yes. Our parents stayed. And now with also the way the new generation is and yeah. voices coming out, if you speak to your parents, sometimes you'll understand they're not as happy as you thought that they were. Yeah. But they stayed because that's what you do. Yes. You just stay. Where do you go? You partner for life. We you said know. for better, for worse. Completely. Yeah. But it was better for worse, but better stopped a long time ago. Worse kept going. Yes. Mm. And worse became the cost of the you. Norm. And then it became, instead of us being together in this yeah. relationship, I'll mm -hmm. find who I am as an individual. You find who you are as an individual. Mm -hmm. And we'll live in the marriage as two different people. Yeah. Not as two healthy beings becoming together. Good. But as unhealthy beings and then we'll pull the children in yeah. so the children will grow up being like do I go to mom do I go to dad do I lean on mom do yes. I lean on dad yes. if I go to mom will dad, will feel, dad bad? feel bad if I talk to dad will mom feel mad yes now mom and dad have been <coughs> shouting and I'm in the room and I can hear do I go down do I rescue them? I can hear moms being beaten. Yes. Do I go down and get involved? Or tomorrow morning, do I pretend I did not hear any of it? And nobody is pausing to say, let us stop as two adults and check in on our children. If we fight, if we're going through a hard time, let's go talk to the children and say, you were aware, you were a witness to what happened. <laughs> Which world? Exactly. <laughs> but it has, <laughs> has to, to happen. happen. It has to. And it, this is part of why men have to start being more vulnerable. This is why men, fathers, have to pause and say, how do I hug my child? How do I hug my boy compared to my girl? Mm. Why is it easier to hug a girl, mm. kiss her and love her? Why am I not doing that with the, the yes. boy? Because the boy is now noticing there's a difference. Yeah. And at some point in teenagehood, boys start to think, is father, is my father a competition? Am I competing with dad in life? If dad is tough, am I going to show dad I'm tougher? If dad's a great businessman, do I one up him? And so that's why for men and fathers to say, first of all, yeah. how often do I hug my boy? How often do I kiss my, my boy? boy? How often do I show my boy I make mistakes? Yes. How often do I show my boy I'm lost? Yeah. How often, as a man and a father, do I show my wife I can come to my boy and ask him for his opinion mm. on where I am mm. in life? Mm. And allow that child mm. to grow up and feel, wow. It's okay to ask for opinions. And it's okay to feel human. lost and be human. I'm how not a often, robot. How often do we tell our sons we love them? But you tell your daughters. Yes. And so the boy grows up feeling love's conditional. Do I have to behave a certain way to get love? Dad behaved a certain way and I watched mom stay. So if I behave this way too. My wife will stay. And it's normal. And that's what people are not realizing mm -hmm. is not to condemn bad behavior, but a lot of people don't realize their bad behavior is bad. To some people, that's the norm because I watched that. And then when I fell in love with you, I assume you loved that part of me. But how much was marketing? When did the marketing end? And then after the marketing end, what was real about our relationship? Yeah. And then it's about fighting the right way. It's when did we stop communicating? When, would di when did our fights become so toxic it became against each other? When did stonewalling come in where yeah. I don't want to deal with anything? In and that's the most painful place to be. Mm. Because the biggest, 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 other than infidelity and abuse, financially, the breakdowns, debt, alcohol abuse. And communication. It is huge. It is huge. And so it's also being able to say, let me pause. Let me stop and not reach divorce because of the typical reasons that divorce will happen yeah. for. Yeah. But it's now for people to be able to say, how do I prevent it? First of all, notice the relationship your parents had. Be intentional about writing down what you did not like about that relationship. Mm -hmm. And be intentional about who you are, yeah. how you view it. 
Are you an avoidant? Mm -hmm. Do you completely run away from conflict? Who in your, uh, as both parents did that, how can you start to change that? Yeah. Listening. Listen to the person who brings the grievance to you. That is not the chance to become de defensive and now poke it back at them. Yeah. It's not the chance for you to say, I also have all these grievances. You also did this. Pick your day. And that's what I tell couples. If I come to you today to say, I'm hurt about what you did. It's not your day and your moment to say, and I'm also hurt about what you did. Wow. Pick your day. Pick your day. Let your partner feel heard. And I tell people 80% of a problem being solved is not to become defensive about it because they're not attacking you. And that's what a lot of men feel. Yes. A lot of men feel, I'm being attacked, I mm -hmm. need to solve, I need to prove. Mm -hmm. What if you just listened? And what's effective listening? Being able to repeat what the person said back. So if I come to you and I say, Lynn, I'm so hurt. Yesterday, when I spoke to you in front of this person, you put me down and it hurt me. Yeah. The correct way to listen yes. is to be able to say, okay, okay. what I'm hearing yes. is that yesterday when you spoke to me, I put you down. I put you down and, and so now what you're doing to me is the charge I have about yesterday immediately calms down. Mm. Why? Mm. You get it instead of becoming defensive and saying, but that's not true, and I always listen to you, and I don't know why, why are you making a big deal of reacting. Yeah. Now, I'm going to find the next 12 things that happened this week to, to tell compare. you, yes, that yesterday is not an overreaction. And this is one of the next biggest reasons for divorce. Yes. It's called flooding. You are so flooded with emotions and things that have gone wrong in that relationship you don't know where to start. When you get a pocket to tell your spouse what's wrong, you flood them with everything. From 10 years ago. Till last week, till an hour ago. Yes. And now your partner doesn't know how to deal with it. Or you've been telling your partner over and over and they just won't deal with mm. it. Or you've been telling your partner over and over and they keep promising yes. to deal with it. Yeah. Now you've left your partner with confusion. Yes. So there's a bit of anger and a bit of hope. Yes. Then if you're the love bomber, yeah. you turn around and fill them with so much love, it'll keep them going mm. until the anger sets in again. And then they start to notice everything else that's wrong. Yes. So how do you prevent going for a divorce? Mm. I don't believe it's setting aside one hour a week to talk to each other. I, I've seen so many people suggest that. And I think if you do that, you've missed out on each other every single day. Yeah. It's every single day at the end of the day to be able to unpack your days with each other. And it's for women to really get invested also in your man at work, what he's doing, ask better questions. What happened with that deal? How did it go wrong? Give your two cents, show your yes. support. Yes. Because as much as you also need the support from a man, you can also show him that you can be vulnerable with me and you can talk to me and I'll listen. Yeah. Turn around and ask your spouse, what can I do for you? Is there anything you need of me in this moment? Yes. And so you slowly start to learn how to react to each other. The other thing to be aware of is the in-laws. Hey, yes. Because that's a huge cause for divorce. Mm. It's too much expectation put on you to be a certain way. It's been told snidely what you're not doing wrong, how you cannot love my child a certain way. And men go through it too. Men have very toxic in-laws as well. This is the biggest thing I turn around and tell premarital couples. You've got to be together. If a parent comes and tells your, your spouse something, you've got to show that parent you cannot talk to my spouse that way. Even if the parent is right about something, yeah. you never show the parent that you can put my, my wife down. or my husband down. We are one. And then as husband and wife, you unpack it, it quietly, quietly on your own. Yes. So showing 
your your parents you're united yeah. is a strong boundary you have to build because a mother has loved a son for a very long time and she feels she's the only woman that knows that son the best mm-hmm. way but she also has to remember as a mother-in-law that at one time when you got married you wanted alone time yes you wanted a chance with your mm-hmm. spouse mm-hmm. and now that little bitterness because of the lack of relationship with your husband yes. you made your son your husband yes and now you're losing your this husband man, as opposed to i'm investing in my boy so that as a mother i can be so proud when that woman turns around and says your mother did a beautiful did job, job with you oh. look at who you are yes it's for mothers and i do it from this age yeah i turn around as attached as i am to my son and i tell him from this age because my son's like mom you're always number 1 yeah and i tell him i love that right now but but if you keep your wife as number 1 jibs she will keep me, me. as number 1 ah. and i tell him the way i i want all this attention and love from papa yes, is the same, the same way, way she deserves all that love and attention cuz she left home to build a home with you with you and the hardest thing is when there's a third woman in tearing the boy apart because he loves this woman and he loves that woman you are making him choose right that shouldn't be exactly yeah. so it's it's really for mother-in-laws to be able to pause and say if your relationship's not working with your husband if it's an empty nest rebuild who you mm-hmm. are as a woman now. Yes. Don't live your dreams and your wants through the boy because you're breaking a marriage mm-hmm. that has so much possibility and you're going to leave your son yeah. in more pain than mm-hmm. before. Mhm. So that's one thing yeah. to be able to recognize and for the men to take a stand for their wives. Good. Which I see in this culture it doesn't happen. Yeah. For men to say you cannot talk to her that way, mom. please this is my wife don't tell her don't talk to her about her, way, her weight she's doing a perfect job with the children give her time to figure it out she's learning everything the way you have you're giving her advice of 50 years she's only 25 she's only 35 give her time give her time give her, time. Give her space to be yes. who she is yeah. not who you want her yeah. to be So leave her uh, alone. alone. What is your parting shot to our audience? Not everything has to end in divorce. This is not talking about abuse, but if you're just feeling lost, you're feeling exhausted in your relationship, share this video with your partner. Go back into being vulnerable and pull the strength to be able to say this person is a good person. This yeah. person is just lost. How yeah. do I how do I rebuild together? Mm-hmm. and it would just be to give people hope that it's not always the end if you do get divorced that there's so much potential that the end is your new beginning that you grieved for a long time but now you've got a chance to refine who you are mm. again use that time post a divorce if you've gone through it to just come back to who you are again don't rush into dating don't rush into anything that makes you uncomfortable find yourself in a way that if you were to now attract the right person you attracted them because your energy rose mm. you didn't have to sell them on who you are mm-hmm. you attracted someone that matches yes. who, you, who are. you are we love you I love and you as too. always <laughs> amazing to know we can always bank on you here on our show where can people find you you can find me on instagram yeah. at shazman bank on twitter at bank shazman and my website www.shazmanbank.com. Oh, wow, well, thank you. Thank What you a conversation as always. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. An amazing conversation and obviously I want to know what you guys uh, think uh, of this conversation of the show. What have you learned and what other topics do you think Shazmin could help us tackle here on the show? It's okay to divorce and it's also okay to work on your marriage. Guys, it's been 
an amazing time having Shazmin on the show and to our amazing team thank you so much guys for everything you do to make sure that this show is impactful it's reaching our audience right on time and of course we are impacting our society Shazmin Banks I can't wait to see you again on our next conversation more love more grace every thank time you, you sacrifice thank to come you, here and you. talk to our audience we truly appreciate you thank you for trusting me my email is right here on the screen send a summary of your story and who knows we could be sitting here with you next on the lean googie show my name is lean googie asante sana watu wa elegance for dressing your girl and our partners here at westwood for this amazing space and our construction friends there at the back see you next time my name is lean googie bye bye